The real story of global culinary tradition can be found in the kitchens of everyday women cooking for their families. So much so that I wrote a book about it, featuring grandmothers from different African countries sharing traditional recipes from their homeland. Now I want to share my take on some of these classic African dishes for you to enjoy. Welcome to Hawa at Home. Hi everyone, I'm Hawa Hassan, and today I'm going to make for you my coconut cilantro and green sauce. It is near and dear to my heart because it's everything that I love about Somali cuisine. I love it so much that I started a whole entire company based on this green sauce and things that I missed from home. So Somali is at the tip of the horn, um, the horn of Africa. We call it the horn. The capital is Mogadishu, where I was born. We have the longest coast in inland Africa. We are heavily influenced by the Yemens, the Italians. We are really lucky in that we're right there on the Indian spice trade, so a lot of our food is re reflective of that. You know, cardamom, cumin, cinnamon, cloves, turmeric. Love cloves for my teas, cinnamon. We took what the Indians brought in the chai and we made it our own. And we took the hawaj from the Yemens to the north of us and we made it our own. And so I'm incredibly proud, if you can't tell, to be Somali. <laughs> My family lives in Oslo, and so when I went to go visit one year for Ramadan about five years ago, I decided that what I was doing in order to propel the conversation about food and culture and history about the continent of Africa wasn't enough. So here comes the green sauce that I made. In Somali, best best means chili, hence this green chili sauce. So Somalis, unlike some African countries, we do not put the heat inside our food. We have it on the side. Our sauce is called best best, or we cut fresh chilies and put them on the side. I'm going to pair the green sauce with seared swordfish, a little raw cabbage that will be wilted down by our swordfish. So let's get started. I'm using full fat coconut milk. It just makes the texture a lot more smoother. Also, Somalis don't know what low-fat anything is, so I think my mom would be really embarrassed if I did that. You know, people ask me, what did I learn from the work that I did in this book? And I keep coming back to, I don't think I understood how coconut milk was widely used as a flavoring agent across the Indian Ocean. So any of those African countries that touch the ocean used coconut milk, used bananas in their cooking. And then the other thing that really stood out to me was the variations of heat. You know, you have in Eritrea where the heat was already in the food, and then they would have like a little spice on the side. And then you have Somalia where the spice is all on the side, exclusively on the side and then the island countries where the spice is either non-existent or it's on the side. So I'm grabbing some cilantro, two limes, and two jalapenos. Jalapenos tend to have a lot of heat in them depending on the season. So, you know, if you don't like a lot of heat, you're more than welcome to take out the seeds. I happen to like a ton of heat. It's what I was missing about the sauce. So I'm going to just roughly chop these and then throw them into our blender. If you touch your face a lot, like myself, be sure to wear gloves because like me, you will forget and you will rub your eyes. I'm just using about a handful of cilantro and this should be it. I'm just gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna just go ahead and throw in our garlic. Then I'll juice two of these limes, squeeze them in. All of this combined will really give us a very bright flavor. I think when I'm creating a recipe, I'm going for a lot of different things. I'm going for smell, I'm going for taste. Um, those are the things that inform my memory of the foods I grew up with. And then I'm also going for tradition. Um, and that comes from conversations with my mom. 
So before I started producing this sauce in a co-packing facility, I used to make it myself. I used to go to my normal job during the day, and then I would go to a shared commercial kitchen in Harlem at four in the morning, and I would leave again around 12 the next day. I have battle wounds to, to show you. It's on this hand. So that's from the sauce boiling and burning me. Talk about coming a long way. So because we sell this condiment in grocery stores now, when we make this, in order to get it shelf stabilized, we cook it. It doesn't change the taste of the sauce. So you could also do that at home and put it in a jar. You just want to keep it somewhere dry and out of the light. And you want to use it the same way you use your regular hot sauce. You want to put it on your eggs, your vegetables. I put it on my burritos. There's not another sauce that I use at home. This has now become my replacement for all condiments. It's really my go-to. And not because it reminds me of home or because it's my condiment. It's genuinely a great, clean sauce. Here's some sugar. Somalis love sugar in everything. But I like for mine to be acidic, sweet, a little sour. So sometimes I put in just a little bit more of everything. For me, it depends really on who I'm cooking for. And today, because I'm making a meaty white fish, I will probably go a little heavy on everything. Okay. A little white wine vinegar. I'm already loving the freshness that the cilantro is offering to the sauce. A teaspoon of salt. And since there's a fair amount of acidity in the, in the sauce, it'll keep in the refrigerator for about two to three weeks. A trick that I like to use if I know that I've got company coming and I want to make this ahead of time and I don't have my own available on hand, I will actually blend, cook a little bit, and then jar it. So that way, I don't have to put it into the refrigerator um, quickly or, you know, and I can keep it for a bit longer. Give it a little. I like cooking for myself, but I really prefer cooking for lots of people. In Brooklyn, I host a lot of dinner parties. Um, my intention really is to build longer tables and shorter fences. And so I do a lot of cooking from the continent for, for my dear friends who maybe haven't been there yet. I try to entice people into conversations over food. And so, you know, sheko sheko and tea, basically. <laughs> All right, it looks really creamy and that's the texture I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll get this big guy out of our way. Pour this into our bowl. And this sauce can serve as a, you can marinate things in it. You could use it the way you would use your salsa or your hot sauce. It can serve as a base for rice if you want to. Don't be afraid to personalize it and use it however you see fit. So that's exactly the consistency I want. You want it to look like a hot sauce. Uh. Mm. It's spicy, it's sour, it's sweet. The coconut really jumps at you. Sometimes, to, for me, when I'm making it at home, I often put in even just unsweetened coconut flakes to give it a bit more texture, but that's how you want it. It really is all that I love about Somali cooking in that it's sweet and savory. I'm gonna go to the refrigerator to get our swordfish. That cooking, that should take us about five minutes. I want to pat it dry, season it with just a little bit of salt. You want to make sure that the red areas are red and that they're not brown. That's how you know the fish is fresh. So I'm going to just pat it down just to make sure that our fish is dry so that it could sear easier. I want to get our pan to about a medium high heat. There we go. I'll let that get to medium heat. I'll put just a tad bit of olive oil. You don't need a lot when you're searing. One of the nicest things about being born on the Indian Ocean in Mogadishu is that we have the longest coast in all of Africa. So I grew up eating a ton of fish. 
The popular foods in Somalia involve goat, lamb, uh, chicken, and beef. Oh, wow. This is the one? Okay. But if you grew up like I did, or if you were born in Mogadishu, then the way you eat is just a bit different, right? So fish might be a part of your diet, but if you're in a place like where my mother is from, which is a, a, small, a smaller city called Hergesa, then that's a landlocked city and they don't eat as much fish as us. While I wait for our olive oil to heat up, I will just put a little bit of salt on here and that's really all you need because remember we're gonna have the cilantro sauce on top. I think our oil is ready. You want to sear it on each side for about two minutes until it's brown. Swordfish is meaty and similar to tuna. It's exclusively cut in steak. I'm really, really excited to eat it. If you have a family member that doesn't like fish or you want to introduce somebody to fish, this is a great place to start. So it's been about two minutes. I'm going to go ahead and sear the other side. Don't want to overcook it. It goes really quickly. In about 15 minutes, you'll have a very complete meal. You've got your protein, you've got your green sauce, and you've got cabbage. This guy is done. I'll rest it on top of this one. All right, it's been a few minutes and our swordfish is definitely done. I'm gonna plate it for us. I'm going to put my fish and my cilantro sauce on a bed of cabbage that I shredded a little while ago, so. Here it is. I'll just take about a handful, and it's just raw. The heat from the fish will wilt this down for me, so I'm not really worried about it not being cooked. I love the crunchiness of cabbage. Yum. Okay. And then you can never have too much sauce, so I'll just drizzle this over. And I'll almost have it as a dressing also for my cabbage. Give this a little taste. So you can see that it's a bit firm. Mm. Immediately I taste the cilantro and the coconut from the sauce. The fish is a little fatty, and so the salt that we put on it is really coming through. Mm. This is a great meal for you plus someone else or just for yourself. So you saw how quick this was. In 15 minutes, I was able to create a protein, a side, and a sauce. I've got extra cabbage, I've got extra swordfish, and I've got a ton of bus bus. So I'm gonna put it in a, in a jar, refrigerate it, and I'll have it on my eggs in the morning. I also love putting it in my quinoa bowls, on my burritos. So I'll eat it throughout the whole week. It probably won't last that long, to be honest. How would we say it in Somali about how delicious this is? Ma'anwaye, which means it's sweet, or like it's really good, like, or you're really sweet. I think the beauty of being at the table now is that there's so much more room to make the mistakes and there's so much more room to create from where you're at. So for me, what I'm really trying to do is create recipes that are reflective of Hawa Hassan. <laughs> and then I'm trying to have it lent itself to my family and my culture, my cultural background. And really just to say, like, if I can do it with, you know, all the things that have come before me, <laughs> you know, anyone can, right? You can create recipes that are from your cultural uh, background, but then you can tailor them for your audience and for your life. This is perfect. <laughs>
Matt and Wyatt. <laughs>